Hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2, another super mini mail call episode. This package is from Avery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hello to all my Philly viewers. That's where Fran is. Fran Lab is in Philadelphia. This one says fragile in it, handle with care. And we have a lot of packing peanuts. So I'm gonna put this on the ground so I can more easily control the peanut situation. Let's see what the note says. Yo, Adrian, first I gotta thank you for doing these videos. Not only do I learn a lot about electronics, their history and how to fix them, but they're entertaining. I always enjoy watching whatever retro items you get hold of. I've always had a love for antiques and old things. Your channel and some others have inspired me to combine my penchant for rooting around flea markets and thrift stores with some practical repair know-how. And your channel is likewise a great resource in that regard. I thought I'd pass along a couple items here that I thought you might find interesting. The first is a kind of portable TV. Initially, I remembered it was a Sony, but when I got it out of uh, the drawer it lives in, I saw it was actually a realistic pocket vision. Perhaps not as cool as all things Sony, but still interesting. Now, realistic is the Radio Shack house brand. Uh, typically, they rebadged other things. My mom got it for my dad after he cut his finger off and was in bed for a while. I'm assuming he did that while like cutting wood, maybe a circular saw, something like that. Not sure exactly how it works. It involves mirrors and confuses me. Well, that sounds interesting. As the topic of my initial email was old CRT things, I felt I had to make good on that. So I've included an old CRT thing. Also something sweet from this neck of the woods. Enjoy Avery from Philly. Thank you, Avery. Let's see what's in here. All right, let me unpack this box here. So we got some sweets and a, something there in the bubble wrap. And we got packing peanuts, but I think these are the cornstarch variety that biodegrade as soon as they touch water. Yeah, in here appears to be something, something somehow. Oh boy, peanuts going everywhere. Oh, there's just no avoiding that. Hopefully that's everything. Nice packing job, Avery. A lot of times CRTs and things, if that's what I just pulled out, they don't survive shipping, but um, crumpled up paper on the bottom, nice cushion and lots of these foam peanuts. It did a good job. All right, well, let's just go right for the big item. Oh, there's still some uh, peanuts in there. All right, it's a little portable television. It's a little black and white Panasonic solid state TV. What a cool looking TV. It's so chunky and industrial. It's got this like front thing on here, little bar. It's got the total 70s look. Although I'd imagine this is probably from the very early 80s. It's in nice shape too. UHF tuner. VHF tuner. On the side here, we have an earphone jack. Looks like a release for a battery cover or something. Battery open, it says. Okay, I'll leave that for a second. On the back, there's a giant <laughs> wall wart. This is the power supply. It's DC 12 volts input here. And uh, that takes the AC in and converts it. Oh, right, look at that, 1977, September. So I was just a few years old. Chassis number T508. There's VHF and UHF inputs there. We have some controls on the back here for contrast, brightness, vertical hold, and horizontal hold. Definitely there's a way to remove this. Probably slots in or something if you're not gonna use this uh, big thing. So let's see about the battery cover, there it is. Hey, look, they didn't leave batteries in to leak and destroy the thing. So we have D-cell holders here tubes and it takes basically nine D cells to run this little television. Amazing. Use D cell Panasonic high top batteries or super top batteries or alkaline manganese batteries AM1. Remove the batteries from the battery compartment if it's not going to be used for a long time. Good advice because how many things got destroyed because people left batteries inside. Maybe this thing was never used uh, with the batteries. Oh, I'm noticing here there's a focus connection there. Springy terminals, absolutely no corrosion at all. So I have a feeling 
this probably was never used on battery. And let's just pop this cover back on. Just the industrial design of this thing is really cool. Look at this awesome handle on the top. It's got the bar antenna in there, very chunky. Uh, it does have something that says July 28th, 2021, I guess. So maybe this was from a thrift, thrift store or what was it? Avery said it was from a flea market potentially. All right, let me figure out how to get this wall wart thing off the back. There we go. So on the back, there's this little metal thing. Uh, this is definitely some kind of big transformer inside. Probably has a rectifier and a tra electrolytic. And it's probably all not in great shape. Uh, so we will not be using that. All right, here we are. Panasonic Solid State TV model TR555. Hey, good model number, Panasonic. 12 volts, four and a half watts. Not a ton of power. Made in Japan, of course and do not open. Well, you know, if I have to, I will open it because maybe it needs some repair, who knows? And let's just quickly check out the bottom, which just has this, which is part of the chassis, probably for servicing the TV when you take the outer shell off. This probably has the majority of stuff mounted to it. There is a speaker on this side. That side has, oh, a linearity and a height control an IF AGC control right on the outside, very nice, and an RF AGC. Pretty cool that those are accessible on the outside. And of course, very Sony-esque arrows pointing to the screws to help you with the removal process. And I'm gonna say on the front, this shroud here is probably something to do with just helping you have better visibility if you're using this on the go. I was just noticing here, only to be used with the TR555 and is not to be used with any other item. <laughs> Panasonic does rock here. It's telling here that it's a center positive DC barrel jack. Thank you for that, Panasonic. Before I give the little Panasonic TV a power up, let's check out the sweets here. Shane Confectionery, established in 1911. Saltwater taffy, very East Coast thing. There it is, 110 Market Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And their number, if anyone wants to order some for themselves. Nice old box, pretty cool. Now, saltwater taffy is something that not everyone loves, but it's very much something that is a local, I don't know, what's the right word? Delicacy, so to speak. I, I do like it, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I like the label here, deluxe. Saltwater taffy, and there it is. I picked the pink one with the, the green stripe in it. Let me taste this. And it's delicious. Now, saltwater taffy, um, very sticky. Sticks to your teeth, so I eat little bits at a time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this saltwater taffy is pretty delicious. If you like this thing, and I do, um, you know, a little bit at a time. So I will definitely enjoy this Shane Confectionery saltwater taffy. And let's just check out this little realistic TV here. I have a feeling, based on what he said about mirrors, that this is the Casio TV 101 or whatever it is that, that Radio Shack sold and rebadged as, uh, as the realistic one. It's a little LCD TV that has a little mirror on it and it has a window on the top and lets the light pass through because the TV is not backlit with anything. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. Oh, it's not the first one. This is a later one, so the pocket vision. This is definitely a Casio. So you push here to open. Basically, the LCD screen is up in the top here and um, the light shines through here. So if you're watching this in the day, it allows the light to shine through the LCD and then you look into the mirror. Now, this is worn out because this should stay open on its own. So you would place it on the desk like this and I will turn it like that. The light shines through, like say sunlight or whatever. And then that is the image that you're looking at. Now, these don't unfortunately survive very well over time. Has a tuner there, VHF low, VHF high, and then UHF. All right, so there's some tape on here. I don't know, maybe that was to try to hold a little kickstand up so this would stay open, but um, yeah, it's supposed to have some detent so it kind of stays open on its own. Looks like you have video in, external antenna, DC in six volts with center negative. We have a little bar antenna here, which is in good shape. And on the back here, realistic, average is 0.8 watts. Of course, that's six volts, AAA batteries, 
made in Japan. Well, yes, of course, because it's made by Casio. The battery compartment cover, unfortunately, is missing, but this does have this little um, thing here, which you can put your batteries in. So it actually would hold the batteries in without any issue. I'm assuming they had this little carrier because maybe there was a rechargeable battery pack that you could get for this uh, because this thing probably sucked down the batteries pretty quickly. And that's with no backlight. On the side, we have a couple more controls here, brightness, dark and light and volume. And we have an earphone connection. I'm gonna power this thing up directly off the battery contacts. There is some corrosion in here. So it looks like the batteries had leaked at some point in the past. Okay, I have six volts going to this, let's turn it on. Well, we got sound at least. The volume pot is very stuck. All right, so unfortunately it seems like the flex cable is bad, which is also a very common issue. You can see though, it's kind of uh, coming in and out. So I don't think there's any chance that this is gonna operate anymore. That's too bad because it would have been really neat to see it, especially that it's got a video input. I could have fed a test pattern into it, but um, yeah, we're not getting anything there because that, that flex cable is unfortunately gone. It's also interesting that the sound cuts in and out opening and closing this door. So that would imply that there's a short circuit in the flex cable. Let me watch the current. It's only about 50 milliamps right now. So it's pretty low current. Huh. I'm sliding the brightness pot back and forth and I'm seeing absolutely no change in the image that I see. So uh, this thing is unfortunately no longer functional. It's a shame, but it's pretty common for these Casio little TVs here. I have a couple others. I think I have two more of these. One is also dead. The other one works. They don't, they're not exactly this model, but they're, they work in the same way with the mirror and the pass-through window. One works, but the picture quality is so bad. And the other one um, doesn't work at all. I think, I can't remember what's wrong with that. All right, very cool. So let's go back to this little Panasonic television. Okay, I have this connected to the power supply and it is currently set for 12 and a half volts, 600 milliamps. This TV said it only uses around four and a half watts, which would be about 300 milliamps. So I'm giving a little extra. Let me plug this into power. The po I am trying to connect the power connector and unfortunately it's a DC barrel jack, but it's one that is not compatible with this little cable I have here. So let me switch to a different one. I finally found one here that actually works. Seems like I tried about five and none of them fit. Has a larger center conductor little pole inside the TV here than is normal these days. So let's connect this up. I currently have the power supply off. There we go. Let's just make sure the TV is off. It is. All right, power on. Nothing, we have no current draw. Here we go. Oh, we have a nice static sound. Do we have an image? We're getting about 300 milliamps, which is exactly what I thought. And look at that. We got a picture. Oh, amazing. I wonder how long it's been since this has been used. It's really sharp as well. All right, and for testing, I'm gonna use this, something I haven't really shown on the channel very much. This is the Sencor VG91 RF test signal generator. Well, it does composite and RF. It's actually called the Universal Video Generator. This was kindly donated to me by a local viewer here in town. So thank you very much. What's awesome about this device is it can output any RF channel, cable TV or broadcast channel for going into these TVs so you can tune to like channel 70 and test the UHF tuner. With this, you can vary the RF signal strength. You can also output all the IF, like intermediate frequencies that TVs use. So if the tuner is bad, you can bypass it. It also has test patterns it can generate, test tones for sound, stereo sound. It does everything. I love this thing. If we're testing these old TVs, it's really good. Oh, that's happening when I touch the antenna. So on the back of the TV here, the connections for VHF, UHF has two switches for external or rod antenna. It was already set to external, so I assume someone was using it that way. Since these jacks on the back accept 300 ohm RF signals, I'm gonna use this little thing here, which is a Balin, which converts from the usual 75 ohm coax here 
to the 300 ohm the TV desires. Okay, so I powered up the set. It's set for channel 11. All right, turn on the power of the signal generator. And let's put this on just channel 10 and we'll set this to channel 10 as well. Well, I'm hearing the audio, but I'm not seeing the video. Let's try channel two here. So it's picking up the audio on the video section here. So if I turn that up and down, so that's strange. Uh, let's see if we turn the tuning. Oh, wait a second, I think we're there. There we go. There is the test signals. It was just the fine tuning. That was all it was. That looks all right, that looks all right. Let's go back to, let me go back to channel 11. I'd like to see this working on the higher channels. There might be a fault. I mean, it doesn't even matter though, does it? Channel 11. Yeah, I think there's something wrong. Oh, I just barely see it coming in there. Uh, let's see what the power level is on this thing. Oh, it's outputting quite a lot of RF signal right now and we're not getting anything, barely anything on these higher channels. Basically in the US, two, three, four, five, and six is on the low band and then seven through 13 is VHF high band. So it could be that there's a fault or you know the tuner dirty or whatever on these high band channels. Let's try channel 12 here. Switch this over. Yep, look, same thing. It's just barely coming in, um, but it's something, there's definitely something wrong here. But I bet if we go down to six and we put the VG91 on six, there it is, look at that. Rock solid, oops. And we should have audio. Yeah, we do. Nice. Here's the EIA color bars. And I'm just fiddling with the controls on the back here. Let's see here. I'm really impressed with this TV. I think it's performing really well. This is a grayscale stair step here and we're getting nice clear definition on everything. The geometry, as you can see here, is pretty good. It could be shifted over slightly. I'd have to adjust the centering rings inside. Mm, focus, focus is actually decent. I can actually see the scan lines all the way through the entire image. So like I said, I'm really impressed with this thing. I'm really, really impressed. All right, so sensitivity wise, seems fine to be honest. That's normal zero dB. Uh, here we're outputting five millivolts here and it's completely static free and a nice clear image. I have it on channel 13 here. Let's see if I can get it to come in a little clearer just by turning the tuning knob back and forth a few times. It doesn't seem to be making any difference at all. Let's try channel 12. It's almost worse. In fact, I bet you six will be almost unwatchable. It's worse and I think seven, oh, seven's actually not terrible, but it's still not great considering it's the same signal strength as I had it on uh, with channel two, which looked perfect. There it is, the same RF signal strength. So Avery, thank you very much for sending in this little Panasonic TV. I absolutely love this thing. It is so cool looking and it works so well for something made in 1977, September 1977. What a survivor, a real testament to the quality of Japanese electronics back in the 70s. I think there was this connotation that Japanese stuff back then was not good quality, but clearly this little TV was made really well and has this awesome chunky industrial design, which just looks spectacular in my opinion. So anyways, okay, I'm gushing. Thanks very much for sending this in. Thanks very much for the little realistic slash Casio portable TV. It's too bad it doesn't work. And then thank you for the saltwater taffy as well. And that is gonna be the end of this video. If people enjoyed it, thumbs up would be appreciated. If you didn't, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button for my second channel if you don't mind. And thanks to my patrons. Huge thank you to them for supporting me uh, and the channel. Their names are scrolling up the screen right now. If you wanna become a patron yourself, you can do so at the link in the description below. 
And that is gonna be it. Stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.